and good evening everybody a uh, warm welcome to this special service my name is Chris I'm the vicar here and hopefully there'll be another one along soon um, a couple of things just to tell you firstly if we're moving about we are still wearing masks if that's okay we're going to eat later you're obviously allowed to take your mask off to eat we are also encouraging um, masks if you're singing but if you're moving around the place and um, we're still very conscious of COVID in this area so if you could possibly wear a mask we've even got some spares at the back that would be great so now would you stand with me please we're going to sing our opening hymn everything you need is on the sheet tonight but the words for all the songs are on the screen okay so let's sing together how great thou art and 
peace of our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, be with you. Please. I'll just use this one for the moment. It is great to see you all. It's lovely to be with you for this really um, special and important moment in the life of this parish. We have, um, it's an extraordinary place, this uh, Girlington, Manningham and Heaton, um, four extraordinary churches and in some ways a really, um, a foretaste of heaven. Um, one of the great things about these churches is that there's always food, which we will, I think, taste a little bit later. Um, but even more, there's an extraordinary group of people, um, people who are committed to this extraordinary um, area of Bradford, 47,000 people here, um, real cultural diversity, huge network of uh, friendships and contacts and support right across all the different communities and into this place we welcome Ben and your family it's, it's lovely that you're you're all here Helen Anna and Lila so really lovely welcome to you all um, and welcome not just to this extraordinary place but an extraordinary time also a time of real change, um, which is partly about COVID, it's partly about even the political situation we're in, the economic situation that we're in, which impacts um, uh, an area like, like this um, more than most. But a time when these churches are coming together um, and in some ways uh, the whole COVID thing has, has accelerated that. So you're joining a, a really dynamic team of clergy and lay people, and you bring some real gifts. You bring some real gifts in teaching, in pastoral work. It was a wonderful interview. Um, yeah, we really put you through your paces, but you, you gave us your money's worth, so our money's worth. So um, um, I, I know that all of us know something about Ben, but I really urge you to just take the time to get to know the whole family um, and especially to be curious about Ben and his background um, and to share about yourself and to um, ask him about, about himself. Lovely to welcome people from right across Inner Bradford and actually probably a bit more widely as well, um, the deanery. Um, some friends, I know that you've got real contacts here already um, but uh, I, um, across these four churches and more widely, it's, it's lovely um, that, that we're all here together to be sharing in this time. The, a service when we um, uh, license a new minister is a time when we particularly focus on the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit who calls us, it's the Holy Spirit who empowers us, and it's the Holy Spirit who binds us together. Um, and gives us the capacity to do what otherwise would just be impossible. So as we particularly focus, of course, on, on Ben, there is a sense in which we all commit one another to the work of God's church in this place um, and to looking after one another, to being accountable to one another um, and to resourcing and encouraging and helping one another out. And we'll, of course, really need to do that all for you and the family, but we do that for one another. So please be on the listen for God's word to you. And let's begin our service by taking a moment of quiet and inviting the Holy Spirit to come and be with us, to speak to us as a congregation, but also to speak to us individually and as families as he leads us on into his work.
God our Father, Lord of all the world, through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayer for your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry each of us may be an instrument of your love and give to your servant Ben, now to be licensed, the needful gifts of grace. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I think we need Ben as well. Yes, yeah, sorry. Can you all hear me? Yeah, great. Thank you. Well, what a collection of wardens. So, Ben, why didn't you come up here so everybody can see how beautiful you are? <laughs> and. Uh, and if you could present um, the church wardens and clergy, if you could present Ben to me. Bishop Shirley, we present to you the Reverend Ben Kerr, who has been chosen to serve as the Associate Vicar of the Parish of Girlington, Eton, and Manningham. On behalf of the PCC of Girlington, Eton, and Manningham, we confirm that it is our wish that Reverend Ben Kerr be licensed as Associate Vicar of this parish. Wow. That was very, it was very synchronised, wasn't it? <laughs> it's almost an Olympic sport. Always. We've been yes. practicing all day. <laughs> yes. Ben, in the name of Christ, I warmly welcome you. Do you believe that God is calling you to this ministry? I do. And are you willing to commit yourself to this new responsibility? With the help of God, I am. And now, members of the congregation, after due consultation, Ben has been chosen to be your new associate vicar. Will you care for him and support him in his ministry among you? With the help of God, we will. So friends, I, we, we really have to do that. We have to really look after one another. This is a most wonderful area, as I've said. It's full of fab fabulous people, and it's also got its challenges. And we're not pretending that it doesn't. So to bring this family in here, we need to surround them with love and encouragement. Um, and I know that you're very good at that, so let's, let's do that. And now to the clergy of the Deanery of Inner Bradford, and wider, Ben will look to you particularly for support and help and encouragement for the work that he is now to begin. So will you do all in your power to welcome him into your fellowship and to collaborate in the ministry in which you share? My sisters and brothers, as we pray that Ben may be a willing and faithful shepherd of God's people in this place, let us also pray for all who will share in this ministry, and that's all of us. God our Father, you call the church of your Son to proclaim the message of salvation to the world. We thank you that Ben has been called to serve you in this parish. Will you send your Holy Spirit upon him and upon all who share in this ministry, that through all the life of your church here, your kingdom may be advanced and your name be glorified. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to take a seat again. The reading is from Philippians 2, verses 1 to 11. Does your life in Christ give you strength? Does his love comfort you? Do we share together in the spirit? Do you have mercy and kindness? If so, make me very happy by having the same thoughts, sharing the same love, and having one mind and purpose. When you do things, do not let selfishness or pride be your guide. Instead, be humble and give more honour to those, to others than to yourself. Do not be interested only in your own life, but be interested in the lives of others. In your lives, you must think and act like Christ Jesus. Christ himself was like God in everything, but he did not think that being equal with God was something to be used for his own benefit. But he gave up his place to God and made himself nothing. He was born a man and became like a servant. And when he was living as a man, he humbled himself and was fully obedient to God, even when that caused his death, death on a cross. So God raised him to the highest place. God made his name greater than every other name, so that every knee will bow to the name of Jesus everyone in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And everyone will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and bring glory to God the Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. <clears throat> Shall we stand now together and sing our song, The Goodness of God.
Please sit for our second reading. The reading is taken from Matthew 20, verses 20 to 28. Then the wife of Zebedee came to Jesus with her sons. She bowed before him and asked him to do something for her. Jesus asked, what do you want? She said, promise me that one of my sons will sit at your right side and the other will sit at your left side in your kingdom. But Jesus said, you don't understand what you are asking. Can you drink this cup that I am about to drink? The sons answered, yes, we can. Jesus said to them, you will drink from my cup, but I cannot choose who will sit at my right or my left. Those places belong to those for whom my father has prepared them. When the other 10 followers heard this, they were angry with the two brothers. Jesus called all the followers together and said, you know that the rulers of the non-Jewish people love to show their power over the people and their, and their important leaders love to use all their authority. But it should not be that way among you. Whoever wants to become great among you must serve the rest of you like a servant. Whoever wants to become first among you must serve the rest of you like a slave. In the same way, the Son of Man did not come to be served. He came to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many people. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, our Lord. but I wouldn't mind swapping places with someone who can't. Let's pray together. God, our Father, we thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your word to us tonight. And as we sing, Lord, that we want to declare your goodness with every breath, we pray that be true not only here in this building, but when we go from here into the world. And so we... So we pray that you would strengthen us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, I wonder, what is your great ambition? You know, what is the ambition that drives you forward, that makes you get out of bed every day? Perhaps it's to become the Associate Minister of Girlington, Heaton and Manningham. Wow, what an ambition to have. What a high place of honour to be in. What is your great ambition? Somebody, I, I was looking at Facebook the other day, and it was you know, doing one of these memories from, from New Year, and it said, somebody had put on Facebook at New Year, I'm ambitious to get through another year. Just to get through another year. Some mornings I wake up, I think I'm ambitious to get through the day. You know, that's, that would be achievement, that would be success of one kind or another. When I was a, when I was a child, my ambitions were all sporty. You know, I wanted to play cricket for Pakistan, and then I came to England and I wanted to play uh, something for England. I once wanted to climb Mount Everest. That was my ambition once upon a time. Uh, I haven't succeeded that one yet. Could I have a sabbatical perhaps, Bishop, to, uh, to try? I don't think so. When I was a teenager, my sister gave me a poster for my wall, and I thought it was very, very funny. I put it up on my wall. I now realize she was trying to teach me something. The poster was Garfield the Cat. I don't know if any of you remember Garfield the Cat, and it had him there on the stage, and the poster said, it's hard to be humble when you're as great as I am. In our Gospel reading this evening, we read about a, a woman that we know only as Zebedee's wife. We do know that she is ambitious for her children, James and John, who are two of Jesus' disciples. You know, some parents just are ambitious. I don't know if you've come across that. Uh, there was one lady who was going around with her two children and somebody stopped her and said, oh, hi, you know, how old are your children? She said, the doctor's five, the lawyer's three.
Zebedee's wife comes to Jesus and she bows down before him. Did you notice that in the reading today? She bows down before him. That's an interesting action, isn't it? Of course, it could just be a sign of her respect, a sign of her humility. That's a good thing. It could be that she recognizes Jesus as Lord, maybe even as King. You know, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, Paul says in Philippians chapter 2. But it could also be that she already thinks of Jesus and the coming kingdom of God. That she thinks of Jesus as the kind of king who will require the bowing of others by the exercising of power and authority like the rulers of all the other nations. If Caesar came to town, you would bow before him. She appears to be very humble, but her request shows that she longs for her family to be lifted up and glorified, regarded as important. Let it be that my sons will sit on your right hand and on your left hand when you come into your kingdom. She wants James and John to be important and perhaps we might suspect she'd like a little bit of that to rub off onto her. How unlike us. You notice from the reading too that the other disciples are angry about it. <clears throat> you think they're angry because they think James and John have done a very bad thing with their mother? Maybe. Or maybe they're angry because they didn't think of it first. Whatever the reason, Jesus calls them all together for a team talk. He wants to get their thinking turned the right way round because at present their thinking is the same as the thinking of the world, which means it's upside down from the thinking of God's kingdom. Christians are not supposed to be the same as other people. Ambition is not supposed to be for personal gain or power. He says your ambition should be to serve, to be a slave. That's the point, because that is what Jesus is doing. Your ambition has to be for the kingdom of God, he says, and not for yourself. What's your great ambition? Uh, my sons very much enjoy a film called Anchorman. Don't know if any of you have seen it. It's very slapstick comedy. It's supposed, they tell me it's hilarious. Sorry? It's medium, okay. Chris thinks it's medium. <laughs> yeah, I'd say there were a few lines I laughed at. There's a, there's a, there is a very funny line in it, though, where this chap who's the anchor man of a, of a TV uh, news show, I think he's the anchor man of a TV news show, he meets somebody and he says to them, I'm kind of a big deal. I'm kind of a big deal, you know. All full of himself. It's easy for people to think like this if they're appointed leaders, vicars and associate vicars. It's easy for people to think like this if they stand up the front and preach or lead prayers. It's easy for people to think like this if they all get, always get a chance to give their opinions and others ask for it. If they wear certain clothes, if people pay respect to their position. That's one way of saying it's easy for the clergy to think like this. I'm kind of a big deal. But it's not just clergy this applies to, is it? Anyone can fall into this trap. We give money to the church and we think we, and of course we should, we should all give generously. But sometimes people give a lot of money and then they think that their money ought to make them important whether in the church or in society. We give our time to God, and then we think somehow that that ought to make us more important. We're always there, always the one, always cleaning the brass, or whatever it might be. We may think because we've been members of a particular church for many years, that makes us important. I'm kind of a big deal around here, you know. I'm not saying that any of us here would ever say such a thing or even allow ourselves to think it. But it can happen without even thinking about it. You know, we notice when we get annoyed 
by something that happened we weren't consulted about. You ever been annoyed by that? I'm kind of a big deal. I should have been consulted. We notice when we feel uh, if that's how they're going to behave, well, I won't help anymore then. I'm not talking about anyone here. We notice when we think somebody else's opinion actually probably shouldn't be taken as seriously as mine. Did you notice that strange question that Jesus asked James and John in the reading? He says to them, can you drink the cup I am about to drink? And why has he suddenly moved the conversation on to refreshments? Is he planning to have a drinking competition to decide the places at the top table? You ever been into Sports Direct where they have those massive team... No, no, never mind. He's talking about the cup of suffering. Okay, says Jesus. You want to be great in the kingdom. Great. How, how's your, how are you suffering? Can you suffer? I don't know about you, but I really don't like suffering. I really don't. The other day I went to have a shower in our house. There wasn't a great stream of water, you know. It was a bit, it was a bit of a sort of gentle flow. You had to lean into the wall to, to really get yourself wet. I was straight on the phone to the plumber. We've hardly got a great shower here, you know. Come and fix it. I hate suffering like that. We almost ran out of tea bags the other day. We were down to our last box of 80 Yorkshire tea bags. I nearly had to drink PG tips. I hate suffering. I really make sure that I don't have to suffer. Jesus says to James and John, can you drink the cup I'm about to drink from? And I'm not really sure that they understood his question because rather glibly, rather easily, they said, yes, we can. I think I might have been inclined to say, can I have a few days to think about it? We know they weren't really all that keen on suffering because when the moment came for Jesus to be arrested and crucified, they did a runner. They weren't that keen to be arrested and crucified themselves. I'm no better because I'd have been running with them. I'd been at the front. My great ambition was to be a runner. No. There's no place in the church for pride. There's no place for saying, I'm kind of a big deal. But there is a place for saying to one another in the church, you know what? You are kind of a big deal. God has shown you're a big deal because Jesus came into the world to serve and to give his life as a ransom for you. You are a big deal to him. So Jesus gets all the disciples together and he gives them their most important lesson in leadership. Your goal must be this, not to be served, but to serve. Not, to, not, not shining with glory, but sweeping the gutter. Not living it up, but laying it all down. That's the Jesus way. None of us can demand it of each other. But it's what we should demand of ourselves. Each one of us. Let's pray together. In a moment of quiet, I want to invite you to picture the face of somebody who you find a bit difficult. I want you to imagine going up to them and saying to them, you know what, you're a big deal. I want you to ask yourself, how could you lift that person up? Because God loves them so much.
And we pray, Father, by your Holy Spirit, that you would bless us all with a deep humility to serve and not to be served. In the name of Jesus. Amen. John, thank you for that. And Ben, would you like to come here to the front? And in the light of that sermon, I'm going to ask you to reaffirm the vows. Come and, and stand here. Um, that you made at your ordination. Ben, before you receive this share in our pastoral charge, will you, before God and this congregation, renew your dedication to Christ as a priest of the new covenant? I will. At your ordination, you accepted the responsibility of the priesthood out of love for the Lord Jesus and love for his church. Are you resolved to unite yourself more closely to him by being diligent in prayer and the study of the Holy Scriptures? Will you continually stir up the gift of God that is within you to make Christ known to all? With the help of God, I will. Are you resolved, Ben, to be a faithful minister of the mysteries of God? to celebrate the Eucharist and other liturgical services with sincere devotion? Will you strive to fashion your own life and that of your household according to the way of Christ? With the help of God, I will. And then will you promote unity, peace and love among all Christian people and especially among those whom you serve? Will you do all that is within your power to build up the church, which is the body of Christ. With the help of God, I will. I confirm that Ben has made the declaration of assent and taken the oath of allegiance to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and the oath of canonical obedience to the Bishop of Leeds. So now this is the formal legal bit, this is the licensing, and I have here a license for Ben, which is important, because it says that not only has he been called here, he's, he's heard God calling him to come to this place, but the church has also heard God's call that you come to this place. So we don't just operate as we see fit, as we want to we come together and we discern God's will together. And this piece of paper is, um, is, is a, a proof of that, really. So it's saying that you are legally in, have your post here um, and that it comes with the authority of the church. So I'll read your license now to you. I, Toby, Bishop Suffragan of Bradford, under the authority of the Right Reverend Father in God, Nicholas, by divine permission, Lord Bishop of Leeds, to our beloved in Christ, Benjamin Lewis Kerr, Clerk in Holy Orders, greeting. I do hereby grant you license and authority to serve as an associate vicar in the benefice of Girlington, Heaton and Manningham within the diocese and jurisdiction of the Lord Bishop of Leeds under the direction of the incumbent or priest in charge thereof or their successors in title and to perform all ecclesiastical duties belonging to that office. In testimony whereof, I have hereunto set my hand and caused the Episcopal seal of the Lord Bishop of Leeds to be affixed this 23rd day of November in the year of our Lord, 2021. And there it is, isn't that beautiful? With a nice seal that goes with the color of the carpet. There we go. So if you'd like to hold on to that, and I'll hold on to that, that's a kind of picture of us sharing together, also with all of you and all especially in leadership here, this charge, this responsibility, this license. Receive, Ben, by this license, the ministry which is both mine and yours 
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So now let me bless you. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect, Ben, in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down upon you and remain with you always. Amen. So, lovely people here. You've been introduced to Ben a little bit earlier, um, but now it's my great joy to present to him, not just as Ben, but Ben as your associate vicar. So, shall we welcome him? Welcome, Ben. And uh, can I add my own welcome to you as the area dean of Inner Bradford on behalf of the Inner Bradford Deanery chapter? It's great to have you here working with us. And there are one or two people who've come tonight that I want to invite up the front as well. So, Frank, can I ask you to come up first? Uh, this is uh, Frank Barnes from Langley House. Uh, Frank, perhaps you'd like to say a word or two of welcome to Ben. Thank you. Well, thank you for the privilege, Chris, wherever you are. Thank you for the invite. And, um, and Ben, it's lovely to be here. And uh, I don't know you, um, but uh, it's wonderful to see what God's doing. And I really pray uh, his blessing on you. Thank you. Thanks very much, Frank. Thank you. And we've got Mike and Mary Vinyl as well from Bolton Abbey. Mike and Mary here somewhere. Do you want to, do you want to come up and say a quick word? Say hello. This parish has had a long connection with Bolton Abbey, uh, which is deeply valued, I know. Uh, so, Mike and Mary, welcome. Perhaps you'd like to say a word. As Bishop Toby said at the beginning, this parish is unique and very different. And it's very different from Bolton Abbey. And it does, us, it does us all good to come here and see the real, genuine nature of worship and to see so many very genuine Christian people. And we love to come here and help, and we love you to come and join us in various ways. You have alpha groups out at our place, and come for visits and similar things. Then you are really lucky to be joining a unique team here, which I admire greatly. All blessings to you. Good evening, everybody. Um, I have been told by Bishop Toby that I am able to speak to you extempore and not just stick to these uh, words of thanks here. Um, it, very, <laughs> I, I don't know this week whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but as long as I don't mention Peppa Pig to you all tonight, I think we'll, <laughs> we'll be okay. <laughs> um, it's just so good to be here. Um, it's felt like it's taken us a long time to get here, um, but both for myself and for Helen, for Anna and Lila. Um, we are so glad that God has led us to this place and to serving you, his people in this place, and to serving this community uh, that he loves and gave his life for. Uh, we are... We don't know where God is going to lead us over this next period of time. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, but we're excited that we get to go on this journey with all of you here and discover what God wants to do. And um, we are so looking forward to getting to know each and every one of you in this place. Uh, hopefully there will be lots of opportunities for that uh, as we, we go on through the next uh, period of time. Uh, but we, we really do want to to get to know you individually, know your story, know your journey, where God has been leading you, what he's been doing in your lives, and uh, where you think God is taking his people in this place next. Uh, that's what we're excited to find out with you all um, in the coming weeks and months and years. 
it's so good to be able to say that, have to say. <laughs> uh, shall we spend some time in prayer now? I'm going to begin with the Church of England prayer for today, um, one that I think is uh, appropriate for us all. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service, whose kingdom has no end, for he reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. Father God, we pray for our world, this world that is beautiful and is precious in so many ways. Yet also as one that is marred and has been torn apart by sin and suffering. But we pray for our world. Pray in particular for the commitments that have been made in recent weeks at the Global Climate Summit. And we pray for, for meaningful action. We pray in the wake of the news that in Europe alone there will shortly have been two million deaths from COVID. And we pray for those countries and peoples that are suffering the worst impact of this virus. And we pray tonight for the nation of Afghanistan as it comes to mark a hundred days under the return to Taliban rule. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Enable your church to be part of the solution to this world's pains. Father, we pray tonight for a, a generous gift for uh, the diocesan overseas links. Uh, you would strengthen the ties of your body in the service of Christ. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our nation, for those who are in positions of power and authority. We pray for wisdom, for wise counsel, and a seeking after the common good. Father, we thank you for our local community here in Bradford. We pray for our MP, uh, the mayor, councillors. We pray for all who live in this place, especially for those who are finding life the most difficult in our midst. Father, we pray for, for shops and businesses and employers. And we pray for young people in our community their energy and their vitality and their presence among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for the church, for this body that you have been building across the ages and across all peoples. Father, we thank you for the reminder this evening that our calling is to think and act like Christ. The one who did not think that being equal with God was something to be used for his own benefit. The one who came to serve and not to be served. Help us to follow him. We pray for our bishops, for wisdom and grace for their work as pastors of the clergy and teachers of the faith. Pray for the churches of this diocese and our deanery and for this parish of Girdington, Heaton and Manningham. Pray that shaped by your word, empowered by your spirit, we might bring honour to you and shine as lights in this community. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father of compassion and God of all comfort, tonight we remember those who are known to us who are suffering today in mind or body or spirit. We ask that you would be near to those that we love, that you would bring healing where there is sickness, comfort where there is sorrow, strength where there is weakness and weariness, and hope where there is despair. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. 
forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Now I have the great pleasure of uh, giving the notices. So there we go, the full range of uh, Christian service tonight, prayers and notices. Uh, I think there is really only one notice tonight, and that is that curry is available for everyone. Uh, unfortunately, not for anyone who's joining us virtually, I'm afraid. We, we haven't managed to stretch that. Um, but for uh, all of you who are in the building, it's wonderful uh, for us to be able to share some time together now and uh, enjoy some good food as well. Uh, so at the end of the service, um, I'm told there's a, there's a slight pause, isn't there? So this, the food will be served over to my left. But first of all, we have to go to the right into the church hall for just a few minutes. Uh, and then we will be unleashed on the food. Is that correct, Chris? There we go. I feel we've got you dancing around the building already. <laughs> uh, yes. And the only other thing to say is that the service this Sunday is at 10.30 and will be an all-age service. And um, I'm looking forward to being able to share more with you then. We're going to continue in worship now, so why don't we stand and... Spend some time in worship. Oh, can I just um, say something, something a little bit before? Um, we have a please. No, keep standing. Keep, it won't be very long. The, <laughs> we have a tradition in this diocese that, and in special services like today, which is a special service where we welcome Ben, our collection isn't the normal collection, but it goes to our diocesan links. And in this part of di the diocese, in Bradford. And particularly at this time, we are thinking of and praying for the church in Sudan. The church in Sudan is a kind of is linked with us, and we are particular friends with Archbishop Ezekiel um, and the other bishops and the clergy there. And there are different people who go back and forth, and we try to give them some money. And if you know anything about the church of Sudan at the moment and about Sudan, you'll know that it's going through a really difficult time. They had a coup there. The military has taken charge, their people are really suffering. So if we could please stand with the Church of Sudan, um, that would be wonderful. And do you, you didn't bring any um, uh, calendars, did you? Just so happens. So Dale Barton is a soldier for Sudan and a great advocate. And we've got some prayer calendars, so if you would like to get a calendar, two pounds or more if you want. That's fine. Please do, go, please do see um, Dale Barton at the end. So let's sing and let's worship um, and let's also give. <clears throat>
Friends, would you please remain standing with me? Um, we already got Ben to come to the front and we asked, I asked him some questions from his ordination and he committed to serve God in this place. And this is now uh, a part of the service which is a commission of all of us where we all commit to serve God in this place and we reaffirm the truth that this isn't just about vicars and clergy, this is about all of us working together for God's kingdom in this place. So if you're willing and able, please do um, affirm your faith, affirm your willingness um, to be part of that work in the questions that I ask you now. My brothers and sisters, as a new chapter begins in the life of this parish with Ben's appointment here, let those present who seek to follow Christ now recommit ourselves in the service of God and neighbour, in the power of the Holy Spirit, so that the good news of salvation may be known in all of our lives, in our homes and in our communities. So friends, will you continue in the Apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread and in the prayers? With the help of God, we will. Will you per persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? With the help of God, we will. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? With the help of God, we will. Will you seek and serve Christ in all people, loving your neighbour as yourself? With the help of God, we will. Will you acknowledge Christ's authority over human society by prayer for the world and its leaders, by defending the weak, and by seeking peace and justice? With the help of God, we will. So may Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love and bring forth the fruit of the Spirit Amen. So as we remain standing, let's receive God's blessing on our lives and on our communities and on God's world. Go out into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honour everyone, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and those whom you hold in your hearts and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace, friends, to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Now, did we, were we going to ask the family to come up and have a little prayer for them? Would, how would you feel, um, Ben and your family, to, to come and for us just to pray for you? Um, I'm sorry to spring this on you, but I think it's, um, it would be great if we could do this. So maybe um, if you could reach out your hand and let's bless these good people. I'm, I'm going to ask, I'm going to jump on Claire and I'm going to ask you to lead us in prayer for Ben and Helen and Anna and Lila. Father God, thank you that you are always for us and thank you that you are always asking us to join in with what you're doing and for these four people stood in front of us right now thank you that they have taken up that invitation to join in with what you're doing in this parish we ask for protection and particularly over the next couple of weeks as they find their feet and as they meet new people and as they have the same conversations, but I pray there can be a real blessing in each of those. 
for every step that they take around this parish, for everything that they see. Father God, thank you for that. I pray that they can feel more and more at home each minute that passes here. And I pray that we can hold them well. I pray that we can be good friends. We can be good family. And for this next bit of your exciting adventure, whatever that is, and however that turns out, and whatever ground that covers, thank you that we are here. Thank you that we can respond to you. Give us eyes where we don't have them to see what you are inviting us to do. Pray for Anna and Lila as they make new friends, as they um, remember friends that they have left. Let them know that they are not gone, but bring new ones. And for Helen and Ben as they again find new friends, as they enjoy living in, in a house together. I yes, see you can bless this time greatly. Amen. Amen. Claire, thank you so much. So I'm going to ask them to now... Yeah, as we, as we sing this final song, I'm going to ask them to lead us out through the doors to the right, and we've all got to follow them, and then we will admire the new parish room, which is very worth admiring, and then we'll go... And we will pick up my favorite uh, proverb, a meeting without eating is cheating. cheating. <laughs> so out the door. But first, let's sing. Let's sing together, Be Thou My Vision. <laughs> Treasure you. 